Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome back to my beekeeping channel. If this is your first time visiting my channel, you're very welcome. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you click in the bottom corner, we've also got the subscribe button that you can click. And if you then check the little bell symbol, you'll get an alert every time we upload a new video. Today, we're going to take a look at putting together some uh, beehive equipment. Uh, in particular, we're going to look at a super. Uh, we've had a couple of comments asking if we could show how to build a national brood box and super. And they're basically the same design, uh, just the brood box is a bit bigger than the super. So I've got a super on the workbench here that we can put together and we'll show you the various component parts, uh, what you need to put it together, and just one or two things that you need to just remember when you're putting it together to make sure that everything goes together well and doesn't cause you any problems further down the line when you're actually beekeeping. Before we get started, um, just a couple of things. Uh, I've had lots of questions about, uh, in particular, what color the queens should be marked this year. And uh, to help with that, what I've done is this year, or last year and this year, uh, I've actually colored the thumbnail to each of the videos in the color for the queen of that particular year. So last year was a yellow queen and all thumbnails had a yellow title page to them. And this year, you'll see that they're all red, and this year, all of the thumbnails will have that red color. Uh, just to remind you that it's uh, a red dot for queen marking for this year. I'll also put up uh, a link to our website where we've got the full list of the different colors that the queens have, determining each year that uh, you mark the queen. Don't forget we have our Facebook group where you can head over and ask questions, uh, particularly designed for beginner beekeepers if you've got any questions that you'd like answered. Uh, we've got a growing group of beekeepers there that will gladly help with uh, answering any questions and offering up tips and techniques to help you in your early years of beekeeping. And as we get into the beekeeping season, don't forget we'll be producing three videos a week, which will be on our Patreon page. And one of those will go live on this YouTube channel each week as well. And if you'd like to take a look at the Patreon page, then have a look in the description below and I'll post all of the details to link to that page in the description. So today we're going to look at uh, making up a super. Uh, it's a very straightforward process and I'll just show you all the different uh, component parts and the tools which are very minimal that you need to be able to complete the job. So here we've got a national super which has already been made up and this is what you'll end up with once it's complete and there are a few variations. Most of the manufacturers follow a traditional pattern but they will have uh, some variation to some of the parts. For instance, in this one, the internal panel has actually got an angled uh, edge to the top of this particular piece, which raises the frames up and allows for a B space beneath the frames when they go in. You can see that this is fitted with a castellated runner and we'll have a look at those in a moment. Uh, but this is what you'll end up with uh, and you can see there are several different component parts to it. So when you buy it, it'll probably be packed up in a, a pack similar to this. This one comes from Thorns, the beekeeping suppliers here in the UK, and was bought, I think we got this one, at one of the trade shows uh, where it was heavily discounted. You'll also get a pack of nails, and we'll have a look at the different types of nails and what you use those for once we get into building the super itself. So let's get started by having a look at the wooden component parts. Here we've got our um, super all packed up. So we'll just cut through the straps that hold it together. together. So we've got um, four separate component parts, two of each. So that's a total of eight pieces of wood. We've got the side panels, which have a rebate cut into them. We've got the other side panels, which fit into those rebates. And then, I guess for the beginner, we've got the, the tricky bit, which are, are these uh, battens. And we've got two 
that have got quite a deep rebate in them and then we've got two that have got a sloping edge to them and uh, I'll show you where those go in just a moment. Putting it together is really simple and uh, we'll, we'll go through the whole process and I'll show you where it, each component part goes. So we need to make a decision as to which part of uh, the board is going to be the top and which is going to be the bottom. So on this one we've got a, a little bit of a not so these would be um, seconds so this is a second quality discounted super which is not a problem but you'll find that they'll have knots and and maybe there might be a, a piece of wood missing in some places you can repair them it's it's not a, a big issue so i'm going to make this the top edge so we've got two different types of batten the one with the deep rebate is the top batten and when you fit it on, and you can see that it will only fit uh, in one of two ways because of the, the size, it, it won't physically fit. So what we're looking to do is to fit it so that with this being the top, this rebate is on the inside and most of them are a fairly tight fit, but by putting a little bit of pressure on, you can normally wiggle it in and get it into the uh, rebate joint. If you find that it's very tight you can just use a, a wooden mallet or a hammer with a block of wood because you don't want to use the hammer directly onto this piece of wood because you risk splitting the wood. So I would always put a block of wood on top and then tap it down. So we'll just do that for a moment. So now we've got that one in place, we can do the same on the other side and so we take exactly the same piece of wood and fit that into the other side. And then that leaves us with the other two battens which fit on the bottom and, and these have the um, slope to them and that's to allow the rainwater to run off the edge and so you need to make sure that those go at the bottom but also that they fit on the right side and again you can just push them in on each side so the slope starts at the top on the inside edge and runs down to the outside edge and again we'll just use the hammer and block and so you can see we've now got the four battens in place. The next task is to fit those into the other side panel and it's just a case of lining them up and then gradually feeding them in and as with most things beekeeping you'll find that different beekeepers have different ways and different methods of fitting them all together So you can see that I've left this slightly open and that's because it makes it a little bit easier to slide the side panels in and again just check to see which side you want facing the outside. So in this one because there's a, a little knot here I'm going to have that facing the inside and that slides in. I know that a lot of people glue their supers and brood boxes together. It's not something that I've ever done and have never really felt a need to and it does mean that I can then take things apart quite easily if I do need to make a repair. So on this side this piece is just 
not fitting in. So we just need to tap this joint down a little bit. Okay, so now we're in a position where we've got all of the wood sections in, but they're not square, they're not level. And this is one of the important things that you need to make sure that you do check before you start adding the nails and, and fixing everything in position. So what we're gonna do is just use a, a set square just to measure the angles, just to make sure that the angles are nice and square, because if it's slightly off at an angle, then what will happen is it'll be almost square at one end, but by the time you get to the other section at the far end, so the frames on the far end of the super, they'll be so far out that the bees will end up building brace comb and using propolis to glue everything together. And then it becomes really difficult to manage. So you just need to make sure that it's nice and square. So I'll just grab my set square. And all we're looking to do is to make sure that it's nice and square along both edges. So if I deliberately put it out of square, so here you can see that it's not square. And so what we need to do is to pull the top across and make sure that the wood fits snugly against the square all the way down. And then simply by turning the box we can check that all sides are nice and square. So that's the first thing we need to do. So one of the things that you need to check is whether you're operating a top or bottom B space because that will affect how you set up the super ultimately before you put it onto your bees. If you're running a bottom B space, then the frames will be level with the top of the super and that dictates where you're going to position the runners that you put into the super. Uh, we run a bottom B space so we have all of the frames level with the top edge of the super and the brood boxes and so what that means is we have the castellated runners that we use in some of the supers level so that the top of the frame sits just lower than the top edge of the super and I'll show you how that fits in just a moment. So for me what I tend to do is on this uh, side board I always have this so that it's level with the rebate in the sidebar so when we fit the castellated runners it allows for a small space beneath the frames. So we'll do that on both sides, just make sure that that fits and we can adjust that as we go. So now we need to take a look at the nails that we've got ready to use to finally fix this together. So this is our pack of nails, I've got one that I've already opened here so we'll just have a look in here and you'll see that you get quite a variety of different nails. Okay. So what we have is some two inch wire nails which have a, I guess you'd call it a sunken head. So this disappears into the wood so it's not sitting proud of the wood. Uh, those are the main fixing nails. And then we've got these one and three quarter inch wire nails which fix the side panels to the battens at the top and the bottom. And then in this particular pack, we're also supplied with some tiny, I guess you'd call these escutcheon, brass escutcheon nails, and they're for fixing the runners to the internal side panels. So we'll have a look at each of these as we go through. So to start with, we're gonna use the two inch nails to fix the main body securely. So as, as you proceed, Continue to make sure that everything is nice and square and before you start putting nails physically into the wood just make sure that all the joints are nice and tight and fully fitted 
because sometimes you'll find that one of the joints might be sticking out a little bit and you'll put a nail in and then it's too late to be able to make that adjustment. So you can see that we've got plenty of nails here. With a super, uh, I usually put just three nails down the side and that fixes the side panel to this smaller internal side panel. So we'll start off with one in the middle and you can judge if you wanted to, you could physically draw a line um, down here and then you'd get everything lined up. Um, but I start with one in the middle. And you can see that the nail has disappeared almost into the wood. So that sits flush with the wood on the outside. So you're not going to catch your finger on that. So we've got everything lined up. We're double checking everything. Just making sure that everything's nice and square. You can see that that's just pushed out of shape a little bit. So we'll just knock that back. And we're just going to constantly check as we go along. So the next nail goes in near the bottom joint. Now if you put the nail straight down, you run the risk of splitting the wood. So what, uh, what I do, and I think what's recommended, is that you put it in at a slight angle. And there you can see that it's not split the wood at all. You can see that I missed the nail, but you, you can see that the wood hasn't split. And if I can build these things, then anybody can, because I think, as I've mentioned before, woodwork is not really one of my strong points. So we'll turn it around, and then we'll do the same on this side. And again, you can see here, it's because it's a second, there's some slight damage here, but that's okay. We can treat this and we can just sand that down if we wanted to, just to make it look nice again, stop ourselves from getting any splinters from it. And to be honest, the bees are not going to mind. So again, we'll pop this nail in, in this section here. So this one will go just slightly below the joint, because if we put it at the joint, on the inside, it's going to come through and not secure it to the wood. So let's just do that one just below. And there we've got it. This side is nicely secured now and it's not come through on the inside. So then it's a case of just repeating the whole process all the way round. So that's both sides nailed into the internal panels. And the next thing to do is to nail the battens through into those side panels. Again, just checking to make sure that everything is square, just tapping it to make sure that everything looks nice and neat. So there we've got the top and bottom bars nailed into the side bars and that's now starting to look nice and secure. We just check to make sure that everything's nice and square again, which it is. And so that's the, the hard work really completed. 
we've made sure that the box is square and that it's all securely nailed together. So the next thing to do, uh, and really the final thing in terms of the construction here, is to fix the internal side panel to the battens. And so we're going to nail the thinner wire nails through from the inside into the side panel and securely fixing it to the battens. And then we turn it over and do the same on the other side. So now I've nailed the uh, internal side panels to the battens at each side. And you'll see that it's level at the top where the rebate battens are. But at the bottom, you'll find that there's a, a small step. It's nothing to worry about. It's just the way that these are designed. And so now, I guess, uh, depending on the type of uh, super frames that you're using, you might want to use either just the standard uh, runners, which are just the folded lip runner, which you, you can get in either metal or plastic. Those are ideal for using with manly frames or the castellated runners, which is, uh, in fact, we use both. So I've got some castellated runners and I'll show you the castellated runners now and how I position them. And again, um, you've obviously just seen that I'm not really very good at woodwork, but I can knock together one of these boxes. Uh, and I'll just show you how I position the castellated runners for the way that I use my supers. Different beekeepers will use different techniques, but this is just the way that I do it. So I'll just grab a couple of castellated runners and then we can show you how they fit. So here we've got castellated runners and uh, we'd use these in the super. Some people even use them in the brood box. I don't, but you can get castellated runners with different spacings. So they go from nine frames to 10 frames to 11 frames. So you could use an 11 frame spacing in the brood box. I personally don't. I use the Hoffman self-spacing frames, uh, but I know that some people do. The way that you would use them in the super uh, is that you could use an 11 slot castellated runner when you're putting foundation in. Now that keeps the super frames a little bit closer together and is uh, designed to encourage the bees to draw out the comb in a, a flatter, straighter method. Uh, whereas the 10 and the 9 slot, you can sometimes have the comb built out uh, slightly unevenly. Certainly with the 9 slot, I found that to be the case, but more often than not, the 10 slot works just fine and the bees pull out the super comb perfectly adequately and it allows me to extract without any problem at all. So that's what we've got here. Uh, we've got a pair, so we've got the two, uh, two runners, one for each side, and I'll just show you how they fit in, and uh, that's what we're going to use those small escutcheon pins for. So when you've got the runners, you maybe find that actually they don't fit, they're, they're too wide, so if I just hold it here at the bottom to demonstrate, you can see that it, it's really awkward, it doesn't just slot in. So the way to get around that, if I turn the box around to show you the top, so this is where they're going to fit. Uh, the way that I fit it is to place it in the rebate, bring it forward, and then it will uh, hammer down the side of this particular length of wood and squeeze in between the side panel here, the internal side panel, and this main side panel. Uh, otherwise, it's going to sit proud. So I'll just do that now. And that's what you end up with. You, the runner sits proud and you get this bow to it. But when you press it down and then you nail it in position, it actually sits in there fine. Now for me, because I'm using a bottom B space, 
I want the runners to sit so that the frames are just under the top edge. So that means that these particular metal runners have to sit just a little bit lower. So we'll just tap that down a little bit further on each side. And then when that's pressed down, it will allow the frames to sit just below the top edge. If you have it sat too high, then what will happen is that on some of the frames, they'll sit proud of this top edge. And then this super, or any super that's put on top of this super, won't then have a seal running all the way around. And if it's a, a long way off, you could end up with robbing. So it's important that before you nail this in position, that you just check to make sure that that's in the correct position. And we can do that with this frame. We'll just slot it in position. Hold it roughly across so that it's level. And at the bottom, I don't know whether you can see, but that sits just beneath the edge, so that's fine. And what I tend to do is to just check both sides to make sure that it sits below. And if it's okay on both sides, then you know the middle's gonna be okay as well. And then with a small hammer, we need to just pop these pins in to hold the runner in place. So there we've got one runner fixed in position and then we can just turn it over and add the second runner. So there we are, one super ready to go out and be used with our bees. So there's the super all made up, uh, ready to go out. As I've said on many occasions, I'm no woodworker. Um, I think my beekeeping skills are vastly superior to my woodworking skills. And if I can make up one of these super boxes, then I'm sure most of you out there can too. It's just a case of taking your time, having a few tools, uh, you know, the tools that you need are, are minimal, and just making sure that you get everything nice and square and that you take your time when you're positioning everything. Make sure all the joints are fitted nice and tightly and I'm sure that you'll end up with some really good supers ready to go out onto your bees. Don't forget to take a look at our Facebook page. We're also on Twitter and Instagram. I'll leave all the details in the description below. And don't forget to take a look at our Patreon page where we're posting three videos a week over the active season. We've got a pile of about another 20 of these to make up, so we're gonna carry on with that. But for now, thanks for watching.